Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, today's video is going to be all about extracurricular activities. And I want to point out that extracurricular activities are important only when your grades and your MCAT score are above the minimum requirement for the schools that you're actually applying to. So guys, if you just want to see some of the extracurricular activities that I did, I'm going to put the timestamp like right here or right here. I don't know. I'm going to put it on the screen and then you can fast forward to that part if you only want to see that. Um, I do hope that you guys just watch the whole video because it does help me out and it does help the channel out. But you do have that option. And so with that being said, guys, I'm so glad that you guys are here. If you haven't already, please subscribe because it helps me out. It helps the channel out. Um, give this video a like if you end up liking it. And uh, let's get right into the video. And so there's going to be two parts to this video. The first part is going to be talking about which types of extracurricular activities are med schools looking for. I'm going to be showing you guys a PDF document that my undergrad university used to help us kind of organize ourselves on what things that we need to improve on, what other extracurricular activities we need to do in order to be successful when applying to medical school. Um, so you guys will all have access to that document. I'm going to put the link down in the description. Um, and so the second part of the video, guys, is going to be I'm going to actually show you guys my screen. Um, my computer's right here, and I'm going to show you um, a few of the extracurriculars that I did that I thought were important, were unique, and I actually got feedback from a few med schools that my extracurricular activities were a strong point in my application. And so with that being said, guys, I'm going to show you my screen now um, so that you can see this PDF file. And we're just going to kind of go through it together um, very quickly. It's going to be very brief, and then I'll get to showing you the extracurricular activities that I did personally. All right, guys, so I hope you can see my screen okay. Um, there are six different categories for extracurricular activities. Let's just run through them uh, very quickly and briefly. Um, so the first is hobbies. Medical schools want to see that you're an actual normal person. So it's always a great idea to put in a few hobbies if you have the extra room. Um, I think on the AMCAS application, you can put a total of 15 extracurriculars. Um, so yeah, if you have room, then add some hobbies to that. Um, physician shadowing, that's obviously a given. If you want to be a doctor, then you need to um, see what doctors do on a day-to-day -day basis. And so it's always good to shadow both MD and DO, especially if you're applying to a DO school, then you're going to want to put that you shadowed a DO. And a lot of medical schools like when you shadow primary care doctors because there's always a huge shortage in primary care. Um, and whether you want to be primary care or not, it's always just a good idea to shadow one um, just so you can put it on your application. Down here we got leadership experience. And guys, I don't want you to freak out about the leadership experience. Just as long as you are in charge of something, that counts as leadership experience. And one thing that really stands out in this paragraph under leadership experience is right here, leadership in church activities. So most people probably wouldn't think that, you know, being in charge of a church activity would cons be considered leadership. So keep that in mind, coordinating a project. Um, if you are doing a, a project at school and you take charge on it, that counts as leadership. So if we come up here to the top, we have community service, and uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. That shouldn't be too difficult for you guys to find things to do there. Um, patient exposure. Now I want to talk about this one real quick. So patient exposure, you can, as I've highlighted here, it can be paid or unpaid. For example, something I did was work in an operating room for four years, um, and that was paid, but I got so much patient exposure that it just looked really good on my application. A lot of people, in order to get patient exposure, try and become scribes, and depending on the medical school, being a scribe may or may not count as patient exposure. And that just depends on each school. Um, they'll look at that on a case-by-case -case basis. So just be careful with um, becoming a scribe if that's something that you're doing or interested in doing. And so last but not least, research experience. Now this topic is a little bit hit or miss. Um, some schools require research, um, and if you don't have research, they won't even look at your application. And other schools don't 
care as much if you have research. I personally don't have any research um, and it's just something that I don't really enjoy and I'm not the type of person that's going to do something just to check a box. So I'm sure other people on YouTube and people you've talked to have different opinions about doing research and not doing research. So I'll just leave that up to you guys. And you know, just let me know down in the comments below what you guys think about research experience. Do you think it's necessary? Do you think it's a waste of time? So just let me know down in the comments below. And so really quickly guys, if you scroll down here, there's a timeline indicating like when you should take the MCAT, when you should request letters of recommendation, when you need to submit your applications, um, and just some important dates that I'd recommend that you guys take a look at. Awesome guys, so I hope that little run through helped you out um, knowing which extras you need to do, maybe what you need to improve on. Um, and so now I wanna get into probably what you guys are all waiting for, and that is to see what extras I personally did. I'm not gonna go through everything because there's like 13 or 15 different things. I'm gonna point out some of the unique things that I've done because I'm not gonna just tell you guys like I shadowed a physician or I did volunteer work. And so guys, I'm gonna show you my computer screen now um, and I hope you enjoy this portion of the video. So let's get right into it. Awesome guys, so these are the extracurricular activities that I put on the DO application. Um, I just personally think the DO application is a little bit uh, cleaner. Um, and so I decided to show you guys this one. So guys, I wanna start off with this one that's second to the top. Um, it's called VIP Kid, and essentially what VIP Kid is, is a company that hires American and Canadian college graduates, and we teach Chinese children English um, online. And so it's kind of like FaceTiming kids in China, and then you have the slides right next to you, so that both you and the child can see the slides. And you kind of just go through the curriculum with the child. Um, they'll either repeat you or read the slides and you'll make corrections. Um, and that's a way for them to practice their English. And so guys, I actually made a video specifically about VIP Kid. Um, I'll put that link in the description below. So go check out that video. It's all about how to get started with VIP Kid if you are interested. Um, but keep in mind, you do have to be a college graduate in order to do this. And so if we go all the way to the bottom, um, third to the bottom, um, this is where I got a lot of my patient care experience. I worked in a hospital, specifically in the OR, as an operating room orderly. And for those of you who don't know what operating room orderlies do, we essentially do everything in the OR from going and getting the patients for surgery, scrubbing in and being an extra pair of hands for surgeons, running and getting instruments for surgery, getting machines, ultrasounds, running tissues to pathology, getting blood products for emergency cases. We are in charge of doing compressions if somebody's heart fails. But I think the coolest part of that job was being able to scrub into surgery um, and kind of just being that second pair of hands for the surgeons. And something that med schools really want to see is that you have been inside of a hospital, either shadowing physicians, you worked in a hospital, you were a scribe in a hospital. They want you to be in the hospital. So make sure you guys get into a hospital somehow or some way. And so right above being an orderly right here, I actually got my EMT license. Um, I did it at the local community college. I did it while I was doing my undergrad studies at the university. And basically, this was a class I took three times a week. It was four hours, and it was in the evening time. So I did my normal classes in the morning, and then I went and did my EMT training um, in the evening. And so that was just a way of me getting a jump start on my medical education. And this is a great way to show medical schools that you are ready and you are eager to learn and become a doctor. Um, this also helps you get certain jobs in a hospital um, and it helps you be able to get that patient care exposure that you need for your application as well. So consider be, being an EMT or getting your CNA license. Either of those would work. Um, as you can see, um, I was an ER volunteer. I did my physician shadowing. Um, some of the hobbies I did, I love weightlifting, 
Um, so I put that in there. Um, hiking with my fiance, I put that in there. And so the last two extras that I want to talk about are these bottom two. I want to start with the very bottom, and that is a Mormon mission. So I served my mission in Chihuahua, Mexico, um, and that was really awesome. Um, I learned Spanish, which is a good segue into the second to bottom one, um, which is called Liga International. And what Liga International is, is a medical charity that provides free health care for the people of Mexico. So I've gone with this organization um, probably about five or six times now. And what I do down there is I work as a translator, but I also have my operating room experience. So I help them out in the OR as well. And then I also have my EMT experience. So I do initial assessments. I take vitals. Um, and get the patients ready to see the physicians that are there volunteering. And so, guys, those are um, my extracurricular activities that I put on my DO application. Um, I hope this gives you guys a general idea of what med schools are looking for. Um, the best advice I can give you is try and gear most of your extras to medicine. Because as you guys can see, most of my extracurricular activities involves some sort of medicine or patient care. Awesome guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed seeing my extracurricular activities that I put on my applications. And so guys, if you have any questions, just drop them down in the comments below and I will get back to you. Um, for those of you that are struggling a little bit more, um, we do have a mentoring service on Facebook. So if you go to Med School Mentor on Facebook, you'll find our group and our Facebook page. So just shoot us a message and I will be able to get in contact with you personally and we can go over a few of these things together. And so guys, if you haven't already, please subscribe and I look forward to seeing you guys all in the next video.